Let's go work meeting. Um, council business review meetings, agenda items. We convinced it to looks like 2.4, 2.6, and 2.7. Is that right? Any issues with that? Nope. Future agenda items. I have one I just want to mention that will be coming to you in January, and I want to mention it now because you can actually see it now. I've asked Monty to put together a staff report and a map of the Christmas decor that's up on our street poles and to have some conversations about how much that's costing us in resources and in supplies. So take a look as you drive around the city, make mental notes so when we come back in January that you'll be able to speak to that. Otherwise, I would probably would sit at that meeting. Go, Where are those decorations? <laughs> exactly. That's what we talked about. Okay. Anybody else? Is Lauren on? Yes. Yeah, he's on. Okay. Um, one thing, uh, Chief and I witnessed um, a possibility. Of, can we get an EV cart that can go out with like the Dare program or even advanced staff outdoors or something that is transmittable? Where. You're going to talk about getting a speaker that's specific to that computer oh. so that he can bring it in if we have a failure in the yeah. auditorium. Because these facilities aren't geared up for those. And they're all different. Yeah, they're all, so we've had some troubles with that. So probably get him some sort of remote speaker. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, something like that where you can just plug and play and roll in. Well, every one of the elementaries that you just mentioned, they should be great because they're newer, but not one of them has worked. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Not one. So. We'll figure it out. Good idea. You use your air. Well, <laughs> the police do for sure. So I think that was we got a good air. Back, so. <laughs> we just sit over there. <laughs> yep. um, good future agenda. Anything else? 1.3 Council discussion of future citizen recognitions. Yard, I, I don't have anything. Any Go ahead, Lauren. Uh, Harriman cross country took third in the nation. I'd like to bring them in. Their cross country team took third in the country, which is huge. So I'll yeah. look forward to bringing them in. So. Sounds good. Well, I'll have some for next meeting, but not for. Perfect. All right, we'll move on then to the meet 2.4 Harriman City Council from the boards and commissions discussion, Wendy. So we've talked about this for a few council meetings now. Um, in Title II, we have several boards and committees that are appointed by you to serve in a volunteer capacity. And those are listed in your packet. There's the Historical Society Community Arts Council, Courtney Harriman, Harriman Trails, Veterans and Military Advisory Committee, Harriman Off Highway Vehicle Committee, and the Diversity and Inclusion Advisory Board. Um, all of them have been kept up to date as to what is going on with this new nonprofit group. Um, I did send out an email yesterday, and some of you probably received some responses, I'm guessing, as I did, about some concerns and being leery of um, removing these boards from council-appointed boards and commissions and moving them to the Friends of Harriman Group. Um, my plan was to bring back a decision in January as to how you want to move forward with these boards and commissions, as recommended. I, I just see a lot of mirroring going on. I don't want there to be confusion. I don't want staff resources to be used in both places. And so my recommendation, as it has been for the past, I don't know, six, nine, 12 months, is to um, remove these boards and commissions and have them move over to the nonprofit, um, along with the funds that are associated with each, each committee and board. I'm here to answer any questions. Have, I know that some of you have received emails as I have about some concerns and being leery. And to be honest with you, we started this conversation three years ago, two years ago. Um, and I was leery in the beginning too, but after working with the nonprofit board and um, being part of those meetings, I, I do feel comfortable um, with moving those forward. So, yeah, so I, I received a couple of emails and phone calls. Um, I know their concerns are about having their voices heard a lot of the times. And when they're in their small com committee, they can. But a lot of the times we fail to meet because there's not a quorum or they're can't make any decisions. And so it's months and months and months where I think not only as a funding mechanism, but having more volunteership in the nonprofit can meet those needs a lot better. Where they don't need to have a specific quorum, they have the board there or they have whatever they are organized. Um, they can probably get things done quicker and accept donations and accept 
other volunteer hour shifts or whatever they need. So I think it's I think it's just the rocky waters for a minute until they I get agree. comfortable with it. So I mean, change is not easy um, of any kind. Um, even if it's a good change, it still can be challenging. And um, I think that there will be um, people that are resistant to change that are going to look at this as a really bad thing. Other people will embrace the change and see it as a really good thing. And I leave that to you know individuals to make those choices how they do it. But um, as council, I think we have to be mindful of the resources that we have, the time that we have, the people that we have to, to be involved with and overseeing and continuing to monitor and fund these type of activities and committees. And if there's a way to serve those needs in the community and identify those types of service opportunities and have the funding and decision making taken off of staff and council, I think that's the right decision. I think one of the biggest concerns that I heard was that the city's going to lose control. And of course, the city doesn't lose control. It's our property, it's our stuff, it's, right. it's the budget that the city has that they're going to be operating under. And so I tried to explain that. Like, this group can't make any decisions on our property right. that is solely in the hands of the city council. So they can make recommendations for things, but that same, doesn't mean it's going to have the same it, as this. It's the right now. Yep, <laughs> exactly. I don't, I think we don't give our legislative authority over to other people. I think one concern would only be if we have a group or board that doesn't feel like they're represented at the, you know, six months or if we have a year check in or however that looks like my concern would be like the veterans can make sure that they're still in these events and, and volunteering and having that action. Um, and, and then the other committees that I serve on, obviously the, the, the OHV and, you know, making sure that they're still moving and progressing forward. And um, a lot of the, there's not a lot of controversy in any of these groups and quorums, but or areas, but there, if if somebody's not gung ho about it, and it's not going to drive it forward, so they need some gung ho people in there. So, I actually think this will help facilitate attracting those types of people because if it's viewed as being the city, yep, well, the city will take care of it. Yeah, right. And that that does happen a lot. A lot falls off to our staff to make these things yeah. work. And we've right? had we've had discussions. I mean, just. Let me give you an example. Um, as we're reviewing, um, unboxing all of the sound system equipment and getting it all set up and stuff, we're going through realizing there's a couple things we probably want to want to exchange for some different things. Like there's a different kind of microphone. After looking at it and unboxing, we're like, okay, we need to make a change. So we have to go back to the vendor and work all this stuff out and do all things. Well, as part of that, they discovered that there was a need for one of the groups to have uh, some additional microphones that they wanted to have. And the cost for everything they want to do, it's like another $5,000. It's not an unreasonable expense for what they're asking for, but then again, now you have budget issues and modifications and who decides this and stuff. And it becomes this complex decision-making thing where when you have just a board that oversees, they can meet together and authorize those expenses without all the you know, taxpayer concerns over and all of that kind of stuff. And, and I, I just think that that's just one of many, many examples where they can just take care of that stuff and they'll have the resources above and beyond what we can do through, you know, um, fundraising, through other revenues they're generating, through all that kind of stuff. I think it's, uh, I think it's the right thing to do. Mayor, do you have any comments? I would just say, I mean, I didn't get the emails that I think everybody else got. I only got one, but, and Jared, I'll be brief, I promise, but <laughs> just to the arts and to those that are concerned, this decision was to support those groups more. This was not, I mean, if there's anything, it's we believe more in these things to support them, to get them more funding, more ability to expand. This is fully supporting all of this effort. So this is not an effort to you know, to quiet anybody or to change things. This is just to enhance and just the council support of saying, go do, you know, do better, do bigger. We know, you know, there's more out there. So, yes. And it, I, I just, I think that for the, for the friends to understand the people that are on these committees that the city has appointed, these are some of the most interested, motivated, educated 
involved residents of the community involved oh, yeah. in these things and they their experience and background and, and motivation and it should all be you know leveraged by the new organization to, to bring that in and, and and use that i think it will empower them to find more like-minded people like yeah that. yeah if there's not the perception that this it's a city function i see to take care of it if it's we're doing this and we need volunteers i think and we've seen that in other jurisdictions with uh, one we come in mimic after Draper and Bluffdell. They, they're a lot of their events and art stuff is all done by volunteership, and it's it's an amazing turnout and, and succession. And you know, I, I think there's argument for some things. You know, I, I um, you guys got the email about the trails thing, and, and I, I those arguments don't fall on deaf ears, right? I understand, but uh, I guess I'm not persuaded that we should carve that out of this decision right now. Not this well, I don't see it. As it it's not say that what we're doing, there's not the issues that arise. Yeah. Like we're going to find the things to change along the way, just like you do with any process. So, yeah, I'm comfortable moving forward with these recommendations. Well, and we and and we still have the purse strings at least for a while, yeah. right? <laughs> so yeah. if there's things that aren't going quite right. We have. To do that there, so. Is your preference for this to come back in session and action or to send to do this? Ordinance change, yeah. so it may sure. it may just be regular talent that are being nice. Yeah, I think it should be noticed so that there's a chance for public comment sure. about it. And on the all of the volunteers, like I said, were emailed yesterday. I told about this meeting. They've been they've been emailed about the previous application period for the friends group. They've been encouraged to join as part of the subcommittee. So hopefully, we do see some of our current. So. Mm -hmm. and, Hopefully we do see some of our current volunteers transition over and I think that just makes everything so much stronger. So good. Anything else, Lauren? That one? All right. <laughs> Lauren. She did move on to point six discussion regarding corridor preservation purchase price. Okay, so similar to last year, we have an opportunity to apply for corridor preservation funds which is an opportunity through the uh, Salt Lake County Preservation Fund, which is uh, selected by the COG Public Works Committee. Um, so we have some possible projects we could apply for, and we wanted to come to council to discuss uh, what our priorities are for those projects. So there are some requirements, not any road. Well, so it has to be for road corridor, preservation and not any road can be is eligible for this so it has to be part of the regional transportation plan which is the plan that Wasatch Front puts together with all of the different master plans cities and UDOT's plans and kind of identifies the most important regional connections and then they list that over 10 years 20 years 30 years on on these regional connections so it has to be on that regional transportation plan and it has to be in a phase one or phase two project which means they expect it to be built in the next 10 years or the next 20 years phase three is 30 years out and so that is not eligible and usually that's more conceptual at that point and then well, the other there's a, yeah, well, you know, yeah the other requirement like, uh, do that is or, that we have to have a willing seller yeah, yeah. letter from the property owner to apply saying and this it alludes to two yeah. other properties that the we're not planning to use condemnation on this on this property and if we do have to transition to that then we lose the, that funding that's committed towards the project so it has to be willing seller and then we can only purchase privately owned property so can't buy it from another city or from a public entity it has to be from a privately owned uh, owner so here's the the RTP, the Regional Tra Transportation Plan, and the four projects that are possibilities for us to apply for. The green up here is that we've already applied and been successful and received funds for, or been told that we're awarded those funds. So, so last, year, right? last year, 6400 West in this area was awarded to us, um, and additionally, a portion of the Main Street right of way was awarded to us. What they did last year was award this whole thing and then they had a little bit of money left over and it didn't cover all of what we applied for but they said 
hey, have the rest of it. We don't have another project that this can fund. So they they essentially partially funded this one. And then 7300 West North of Main Street was a few years ago. We got uh, money to, to fund that. And then 138th was a little bit unique. We were only asking for and funding more than what was supposed to be dedicated by the developer anyways. Um, so we got just a little bit of money there, um, but not much. So that leaves us with uh, some other projects that are on the RTP that haven't been funded or applied for. Main Street's done and built, so we don't need any right of way right here. Um, but there are some other projects. And the colors, so red is phase one and blue is phase two. And this is Wasatch Front phasing, not necessarily our phasing. I think we could probably all agree all of these are probably phase one projects within the next 10 years. But so we put those together. So number one is 134th South from 6,000 West to 6,400 West. Um, so this would be a project to widen us from three lanes and even a certain section, it's two lanes there to uh, go five lanes. It's already five lanes to about here, at least the right of way is. And we would need additional right of way to carry that all the way to 6,400 West. So that's that's a project that we could apply for. 6,000 West or Pioneer Street. That is another project where we have a, uh, various residents that front the road that own more than uh, what we need for the right of way. So we would need to purchase individual uh, pockets of frontage for certain property owners um, for that project. And that would be, a, again, a, that's a two lane road without curb gutter, sidewalk, that, that project. We'd need the right of way to make it go to three lanes, curb gutter, sidewalk installed with that project. Number three is 7300 West. So we com completed widening this north portion of 7300 west this is for this kind of middle bottom section um, it's actually widened from here to here and from here to here and we're actually working on well we've finalized the design for that and we actually have it budgeted in our budget for next year to uh, build that that road we don't have all the right of way yet, and we are actually just at the beginning uh, talking to property owners on that. So, um, so that's another option. And then finally, the fourth option is still 7300 West, but it's up a little bit north in the Olympia area. So, and so this is the U111 realignment that we've had many discussions about, and this is the 7300 West Road connecting up to that. Um, and we can get into a little bit of pros and cons for each of these, but that's the overview on, on these projects. Okay, so 134 South, number one. The, the difficulties with this one is that you're affecting a, a ton of individual parcels. So it's 16 parcels that we would have to get a willing seller from. And if we got eight, we could apply for eight, but essentially each parcel we'd have to get a willing seller for to be eligible for funding. And so with the estimated uh, cost and square footage, we'd be applying for about $115,000. 6,000 6, West, this is again from Harriman Boulevard, Harriman Main Street. It's a little bit more uh, area, but less parcels, so 12 parcels. Um, about double the area though, and about double the cost um, that we would apply for. So 232,000 approximately. And then 7,300 West, it would be again, a lot of parcels, 14 parcels, about the same area as 6,000 West and about $250,000. Um, and then 7,300 West in the Olympia area, it's a little bit simpler. It's just two parcel, two parcels, same property owner. Um, but it's a massive area, so it'd be approximately almost six acres, and our estimated cost at 2.3 million dollars we would apply for. So now let me go back. So this is the scoring criteria that the committee is supposed to use for uh, corridor preservation. So we went through just like last year and tried to score it ourselves based on their criteria, and these are where the, the scores that came in based on their criteria. So 53 for 134, 47 for 6,000 West, 46 for 7,300 West, the south end, 
and 55 for 7300 West. Um, so that just goes through kind of all of their, their scenarios that, that we would look at. The, Can I ask this real quick? Yes. Is that the same order that they appear in our um, CIP? Uh, so, no. This, so this 7300 West is actually booked for next year in our budget and our CIP to build. So that would, as far as construction timing, 7300 West comes into our budget first. As far as scoring for our overall CIP, I believe it just, one it just seems interesting to me yeah. that the one we're going to build is that we're, we're already allocating money to build is the one we, we and we don't have the rights of way yet. And yeah. So yeah. it would seem to me it would be a priority for us to secure those rights of way as soon as we possibly can to yeah. carry forth our budget planning. If we don't, yeah. We've allocated money for a project out of order, I, and 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 it, and it just seems like this is the lowest score, but it's the one we need. But I, I, I think Jerry, right is, we would, if we don't get the funding, we will have to buy those as part of that budget. Right. This is something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we can get this, then that frees money that. up. Yeah, I, again, I'm just. Yeah, so that that's a good point. Seventy three hundred West. We actually have it in this fiscal year budget to purchase right of way. This would be essentially offsetting that and using that now towards construction the next year, we, or we could ship those funds uh, somewhere else. So we, it is programmed to buy the right of way, but the, Rather use this money we could, we yeah, if we could get that money from another source, then we're not, we're still paying it, but we're being reimbursed for that. Do we have to pick a project or can we submit all four? Um, so that's a, that's a good point. So they have about $4 million usually roughly to award throughout the Salt Lake County. Um, and so typically they they award three to five projects depending on, on the, the, uh, the applications. It would be, so if we added these all up, you're about just over three million. So that'd be three fourths of the cost. But, we did last year. but yeah, but just because you apply for it, they, they can pick and choose what they want to fund, right? Yep. The other point to, that I want to make is this section is 7300 West, and Blake, feel free to jump in, is part of the Olympia PID. So technically, we are not needing to buy that right of way at any point. This would, they would be required to dedicate it when they went to build it. So this we all are we're on the hook to buy at some point this is not necessarily our cost to buy at this point but it's it, we could get reimbursed or we could get money from the per preservation corridor i'd submit all three and whatever we think is top three point order and do it the nice so thing, i mean last year we submitted one the the 73 the 64 64 reps up there and like, I mean, they awarded like 75,000 to Conwood Heights and 106,000 or something else. And then they awarded two point something million to Harriman. And, and it was just because we applied for it. And so I say you well, apply for the one part that is uh, what we get. The group that kind of decides that. I will say that I think when they do try to, because there's limited funds, they try to move that. To right, that's that's right. right. So we had agreed years ago to help Bluffdale with some of theirs and some of Jordan. So we do. I mean, the mayor's on that committee they do kind of work together and try to year to year move folks around really some significant burden. projects while still spreading around what they can i mean we all know commodities do take more funds we kind of have to work together that way as well. yeah. yeah and that's a good point it's not only that the committee is aware of where these projects have been funded in the past it's also built into their scoring so if a community hasn't received funding in the last five years they automatically get a 10 point boost on their on their scoring, but and that's in addition to the committee actually discussing it, discussing it after the scores uh, come out. So, yeah, so we're I would say we're a little bit on the end of hey, you've just been funded. We may not see the funding that we've seen the last couple of years, but you never know. Just like so part of what we ask for is to take those things into account yeah. realistically. Exactly. Well, and sometimes the smaller projects are easier because yeah, you can give at the, at the end, oh, we still have this much stuff here. Yeah. Sometimes they break it down and give you partial. Right? 
and say, well, you're asking for 200,000, we'll give you 100, is that okay? Um, looking at the CIP though, just to come back to that, I think 7,300 West ranks the highest because it's obviously scheduled already on the budget, but out of the next two, 6,000 is higher than 134. So 136 and a half is the score of 6,000 and 105 is- Plus they're waiting longer. I think that's like a 20 minute waiting along. <laughs> it's been longer in the queue, <laughs> just for information there. So yeah. Awesome. Because they might ask for our priority when we apply for these. Yeah, so I guess our, our question is, which ones and what's the priority would, would we like to, to, to go with? If we, if we were the CIP, it would essentially be those top three reversed. Just reversed, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, and what? Apply for the part 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 yeah, one, three, and see what happens. Yes. If we put three as one and one as three, and they come back and say, look, Aaron, we give you 100,000, then where do we want to put it? On the one we're building next? Yeah, the one we're building next is the one we need it for now. Yeah. So. And I don't think they've announced when this is going to be applied for yet. We just wanted to get that announced. They had a meeting. Yeah. They're changing some of the criteria on how it's scored and who's eligible for it and things. So I think they're trying to buckle down on developers pushing the format. So. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Yeah, Thanks. That's, yeah, that's good. Okay. Moving on, 2.7. Um, okay, so yeah, jump into another project that we do have some corridor preservation money for. Uh, Harriman Main Street, Harriman Highway, uh, 131 South. We've got a, a lot of names for this road, but we've talked about it many times as well. Um, background, we were granted money through the state uh, for 15 years, 800000 per year and to make a substantial project out of that we bonded for it up front and have about ten and a half million available for this project so if you recall back in July we came and said hey we think the scope of the project's going to be a little bit too much for the funds that that we have let's uh, see if we want to scale it down so the decision was uh, to go from an 80 foot cross section to a 68 foot cross section the only difference there is the shoulders were, were smaller, right? And then at the intersections, we actually widened back out to the to the 80 foot uh, cross section. The other decision that was made, uh, a huge cost is to convert the power to underground. So we said, hey, we'll relocate it, but if we keep it aer aerial, that's no longer a cost to the city. It's a cost to Rocky Mountain Power to relocate. Um, so we move forward with that. Oh, and then we also said, yes, we want to keep the landscaping in the park strips for the project. Um, so we went forward with that. Final design is completed. We've pre-qualified four contractors and it's out for bid currently. Um, and we are planning the bid, the bid opening is planned for December 22nd. So coming up here pretty soon. Um, but with our final design, we still aren't sure how far we can go with our funds. Uh, construction bids have looked more promising lately than they have in the past, um, but it is, it, it's still volatile. So because of that, we built in uh, segments of the bid like we've done on other projects that we've talked about. So starting point at 6250 West or where the roadway improvements end right now, curb gutter and sidewalk, and carried it to past Danzy Boulevard as base bid section and then from there to the the curve in the road essentially uh bid alt one and then from there to 7300 west is bid alt two um i should say the base bit one of the big uh motivators behind this project is a safe walkable area along this corridor um especially to the elementary but in general a, a walking route through here and so the base bid if we only have funds to fund the base bid, it will include a uh, asphalt path for 27300 West. So regardless of if we just award the roadway improvements to this point, which would be sidewalk on both sides of the road, it would then transition to a asphalt trail to connect 7300 West to that, that point. So regardless, we will have a, a pedestrian connectivity from the east end of the project to the west end of the project. Now, now update here are the 
we have a consultant that actually works with a, um, a former contractor that submits mock bids. Essentially, they call suppliers and get the prices that contractors get, and then they submit a bid ahead of the, the actual bid opening. So that's where we're at today. We've got those prices back. This is that base bid section plus the asphalt path to get us to 7300 West. This is base bid plus bid alt one, base bid plus bid alt two. Um, so here are the prices coming in um, for those for those bids. So we have 10 and a half available, uh, almost 10.6 now. Um, and then a, a big portion of this project is some water line work. And so the water fund is able to pay for those in, those improvements. Um, and then we have a few outside grants, like we talked about corridor preservation. Uh, we, we've been told that the, the project would be eligible for tree grant money for the street trees that we're planning. And then also we're, we're uh, realigning some manholes for South Valley sewer when we redo the road, we'd have to do that anyways, but they have told us they would reimburse us for those costs. So not a ton of money. <laughs> With all of those combined, we're somewhere in the 100,000 realm um, of extra funds. So with that, that's our total estimate, well, not estimated, that's our total budget available. And this is where the base bid price is coming in. So they're right about even. And from what we've seen, the, the bids have been pretty competitive the last couple months around uh, for, for other pro similar projects. So we feel pretty good that this is going to come in close to, if not within our, our budget that we have available. So that leads to the discussion if we're okay awarding just base bid, or if we have a priority to shift funds around to get this project a little bit further. And the reason we're coming before the bid is so that we have an idea at the bid opening, and then we can talk to the contractor after the bid opening to uh, know exactly what direction we want to go. Either way, we'll we'll be coming back in January to confirm that construction contract with them. So here are some options for additional funding. Um, we have a couple different funds, and I don't want to get too much into the details of, of these funds, but there's options for adding money to the project, and it's it's based on kind of pro priorities. So this option one is essentially we've over budgeted for a reimbursement for Danzy Boulevard. Um, so that one is, is pretty easy to say, hey, we have a reimbursement agreement for this much and we have this budgeted for almost double as much. And that was it looked like just because it was copied in two fiscal years instead of one. And this project will span both fiscal years. So we could use that. 700,000 in excess towards the project. Um, option two, we alluded to this 7,300 West is slated for construction next year. If the council had a desire to, we could sh shift that $3 million that is planned for that construction towards this project. That project then would fall back into the line of trying to find funding, right? 7,300 West. Essentially, you'd have to take it's almost option four. You're taking all those projects and you're sliding them all back for the many years. Exactly. And then we've, uh, and so there is about $1.7 million for property acquisition that we've been holding um, for the area near Miller Crossing that has been a placeholder in the, the capital projects budget. Um, but that's a consideration. If we wanted to go away from that, we could shift funds towards the project as well. Um, so the only problem with that 1.7 million is it's actually money from a land sale or game point, which should go towards that loan that we need to start paying back. So why it's available, it is it's essentially it's a loan. So it's just how do we how do we we, we, we do have to pay that loan back by 2025 according to the uh, loan agreement we made with the impact fund. So, the water fund. yeah yeah so that one has some strings attached to it a little bit messier um, and then like nathan said the other option is we look at all of our capital projects look at our cip overall and just re-rank everything if the priority is main street completed all the way to 7300 west we could commit all the funds that are necessary 
and then reprogram the all the other projects off of that. Um, so yeah, there's the the summary of options we can we can hand we can use. Like I said, this one's a little bit more messy, and then this one would essentially be how much we need to to do Main Street. We could reprogram other projects. So essentially, what we're looking for is are we okay with just base bid? Do we want to look at these options for base bid plus bid alt one, or do we want to look at these options for completing the whole project? Or if the, the project comes in over the base bid, do we actually come back and take things out so we're, we don't have to add funds to, to build the project? Those are, those are kind of the options we have at this point. So. And again, we'll be we'll coming. This will all come back for a if no matter what your decision is, we'd have to come back for a budget amendment unless it's number one and we come in under budget. Then that would be the only time we wouldn't come back for a budget amendment, but we would come back for the construction uh, contract approval from from you guys. So yeah, just maybe some it some like feedback. Hopefully, it's one, and if it's not, then we have that discussion. Because uh, I, I, I'd say I don't, I don't think we will. I think we've shrunk the elements of the project down about as far as we really want to go. I don't think we want to go below where we're at. Yeah. Yeah, we can. So hopefully the the bid comes in at or below what we're estimating. That would be that'd be good. <laughs> um, I, I'm I'm really hoping that 20% contingency is extra healthy, and there'd be some of that left over too that we can. Stretch, yeah, that, you know? that's a good discussion point. That we have 20% contingency. That is for change orders, things that we find in the field that are added later that the design didn't catch. So on a reconstruct process, you usually have a higher one because you have existing utilities, property owners that you're affecting. Um, so 20% is right in the middle of what you'd typically see. It'd be 15 to 25% on a reconstruct. If it was a brand new greenfield road and you're just going through a farm or something, a little bit simpler, usually you can bring that down to 15%, 10%. Um, if the bid came in like this, 13.5 and we have 13.4, we could be a little bit flexible with that contingency and say, hey, we can fund this and now we have 18% contingency. So we have a little bit of flexibility. I would not recommend going under 15% contingency for this project at all, just because there are a ton of existing utilities that make this a little bit complicated. So uh, and on the sewer board, we saw quite a few of our bids for next first and second quarter come in significantly low for competition and for worrisomeness, right? They want their projects lined up. Um, I, I'm assuming we're going to see this coming a little bit lower and we might get all one included in that yeah, that's what I'm price. Too, yeah. Even with that 700,000 maybe reimbursement funds that you can flip over there. Um, but then you're like, oh, is it worth another 3 million to finish it, right? Yeah. Instead so of remobilizing. Mobilization, yeah. Yeah. How much more cost per linear foot or square foot, however you roadmap that. Yeah, exactly. Cost. Yeah, right now, and this is kind of built in with the contingency. So the further you go, the more contingency you have. But you can see, yeah, it's about a, a $300 million, a $3 million uh, to finish the project from base bid to bid all is the estimate. And so and that's if we do it at one time, though. If we come back yes. in three to five years, it's we're looking at five, more. $6 million yeah. for that yeah. small section. So well, I, I, again, I, I think it's all a little bit, we'll have to wait and see how yeah, it comes out. Too. But mm -hmm. I, I would, you know, betting man, I think we'll probably get close to base plus all one. Yeah, but I, I hate to take the whole CIP and bump it three, five years and get those ones well, that are. Let's see what happens. Yeah. If we get down and we need, and we maybe we have some that could go to all two and it's not all of it, we just have a smaller portion to move, maybe we can have that discussion. Yeah. So so the plan then would be to have this on the work meeting as well as the regular meeting. Yes, in on January. January. Yeah, on the, because of the timing of the bid, we have to make that award. <laughs> so. Um, we'll schedule that and, and put this early enough in the work meeting that you can discuss hash it out before we have our and then yeah let's have a final good. decision. Okay. Well, I've done likewise as meeting both today. Structure and time. <laughs> work meeting after time is great. Yeah. All right. That looks like it's it. Motion. 
We'll do it there. Second. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Well, you got to change your thing, Miss. So, I'm going to call it a season.